Make a list ranking the accessories of the Disney princesses. Accessories. Oh, this is the prince video. Well, hello everybody, Nikki Marr here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is so good to see you. I hope you've had a wonderful week full of magic and are ready for another ranking video. And by the title of today's video, I'm sure you know today is the long awaited prince ranking video. Now that little joke at the beginning that the princes are just accessories to the princesses, not 100% true, but I mean, <laughs> now it is no secret that the Disney princesses are significantly more popular than their significant others. Now the princes do make quite a big impact in their story too though, so we gotta give them the credit that they deserve. So today we are going to be ranking all of the Disney princes. Now you might be asking yourself, Disney Nikki, is there an official prince brand? No. So how I have devised that we are going to make our list today is that we are going to be ranking only the significant others of the official Disney princesses. I have already made a video ranking all of the official Disney princesses. If you guys are interested in that video, I will link it right up here. As for the criteria we will be going over today, there are five touch points that I want to hit for each prince. That will help give us a more well-rounded view of this character. Number one is the impact that they've had on the Disney brand. Number two is their character design. Number three is the voice acting. Number four is their song or songs or if they have a song at all. <laughs> and category number five is their goal. Most Disney princes in their movie have a goal and so I'm going to be examining their goal and whether or not they complete it. We are also only going to be talking about these princes in terms of their appearance in their original animated movie. So we're not taking sequels into account and we are also not going to take into account live action movies. And before we get started as always we are going to jump into some some disclaimers and some conditions for today's list. But if you guys would like to jump right into the ranking, you can jump right to this timestamp. For the disclaimers, first and foremost, I am not affiliated at all with the Walt Disney brand, and therefore I do not speak for the company or the brand. And the second disclaimer is that this video is all just my opinion. As always, I love connecting with you guys down in the comments about all of your favorite Disney things. So if your list of princes looks a little bit different than mine, make sure to tell me why down below. All of us gravitate towards something different and that is extremely beautiful. And these are all just my opinions. I have no definitive authority over these characters because I have some strong opinions on them. <laughs> and as for the conditions, the only condition to make today's list is that that these men must be a significant other to an official Disney princess. And yes, I will be including Anna and Elsa. And you might be thinking to yourself, Disney Nikki, not all of those princesses have significant others. Correct. The princesses who do not have significant others include Merida, Moana, Raya, and Elsa. So if my calculations are correct, that would leave us with 11 Disney princes that we are ranking today. And with that, I believe we are ready to start ranking the Disney princes today. So without further ado, let's line up these 11 princes and rank them from worst to best. We are starting off all the way at the bottom today at number 11 is John Smith from the movie Pocahontas. Now, the reason John Smith ranks so low for me is because of his characterization at the beginning of the movie. He comes across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World, and he is a very ignorant and arrogant human. He has no problem admitting that he believes the indigenous characters are quite savage, and directly to Pocahontas' face. And I will give credit where credit is due, Pocahontas does open his eyes and show him that there is an entire world that he still hasn't experienced. As she says in Colors of the Wind, but still I cannot see, if the savage one is me, how can there be so much that you don't know? She is calling him out for his ignorance. And while he is open-minded enough to listen and take in and understand that he is ignorant in some ways, he just generally encompasses this colonizer energy that I really don't like. And once again, we also have to mention that his character is based on a historical figure. The real John Smith, when he met Pocahontas, was in his late 30s or early 40s. And she was in her early teens, so there was no romance at all between the two of them. But again, we are going to analyze this character as just an animated character for right now, so let's get into the criteria. First and foremost is his impact on the Walt Disney Company. John Smith has not had the biggest impact considering all of these negative qualities surrounding him. Really the only parts of Pocahontas that Disney sort of pushes forward in their theme parks are the character Pocahontas herself who is as a character, a great role model, and also the music. The music in this movie is absolutely spectacular. Everything else is really pushed to the back as it can be seen as problematic in some sort of way. 
But regardless, until a pandemic, John Smith was able to be seen every night in Phantasmic, as during the battle, he would swing across the mountain on this large rope. He has since been replaced by another Disney prince who we will talk about a little bit later. He is a very, very rare meet and greet character, but besides that, we really just don't see a lot of him. As for his character design, it is simple, and I feel like this is a good decision considering we want most of the attention to be on Pocahontas and the nature that surrounds her. And despite me having some, I have to point out I'm not a fan of his long blonde hair. Moving on to the voice acting, John Smith was voice acted by Mel Gibson. And while I think his speaking voice is acceptable enough to sustain the character, his singing in this movie is not my favorite. There was actually a full song called If I Never Knew You that was fully animated and you can find on YouTube, but it was cut from the movie. And while his singing voice isn't bad, he does not hold a candle anywhere close to Judy Kuhn, who of course was the singing voice of Pocahontas. As for his song, he does sing a couple lines in the song Dig, which is primarily sung by Ratcliffe. And as for his goal, his goal is to colonize the new land. And in terms of this Disney animated movie, he's not successful. Granted, albeit for an okay reason. At the end of the movie, he is set to be executed by the Powhatan tribe. However, Pocahontas saves his life, and when Governor Ratcliffe attempts to end the life of Chief Powhatan, John Smith throws himself in the way, taking the bullet. So granted, he comes around in the end, but again, the tones at the beginning of his movie are the reason why we place him down here. With that, we are moving on to number 10, who is Prince Charming from Cinderella. Now, Prince Charming was Disney's second Disney prince, and they were nowhere near close to creating a successfully rounded out and deep male figure in their movies, at least a prince figure. Prince Charming is... <sighs> He doesn't do a lot. <laughs> he really doesn't do a lot. He, of course, is throwing the ball, which Cinderella attends, and he dances with her at the ball, and they sing a lovely song, and then he sort of disappears again until the wedding. I would consider him the equivalent of, like, Aurora in her movie, to where she doesn't make a huge impact in the movie specifically, but makes a bigger impact outside of her movie. As for Prince Charming's impact, he can be seen every day in the Festival of Fantasy Parade alongside Cinderella. He can also be seen at very select few meet and greets where Cinderella is also present. He does not meet on his own. And he does have a ride named after him, Prince Charming's Regal Carousel in the Magic Kingdom. But besides that, we don't really see much of him. But again, with so little screen time, good for him and making it to parade status. <laughs> for his character design, he just very much seems like a quintessential prince. Nothing really stands out about this costuming, but it doesn't also strike me in a bad way. As for the voice acting, William Phillips was the speaking voice of Prince Charming, and Mike Douglas provided the singing voice for the prince. As for the song, Prince Charming sings So This Is Love with Cinderella. In my opinion, it is an absolutely beautiful prince prince and princess duet. And as for the prince's goal, his goal is to find the girl that fits the slipper. And is he successful in this? Yes, theoretically. However, he really doesn't take a part in the search. That is really led by the Grand Duke. So can we call him successful at his goal? Sure, but he sort of sits in the background and has others doing the work for him. I guess that's okay, it's a give and take, but it's also why he lands down at number 10 on this list. <laughs> and with that, we move on to number nine on my list, The Prince from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Important to distinguish the movies because there are a lot of nameless princes on this list. In the early days of Disney animation, it was very obvious as to where the attention was put. <laughs> Snow White and all seven dwarves have very specific names, but this prince, does not. Now I know a few of you in the comments are gonna show up and say, but what about Prince Ferdinand or Prince Floran or Prince Florian? I am very sad to say that these names are not officially recognized by the Walt Disney brand. They are fan-made names that have gone so viral that they show up in simple Google searches and it has just become common knowledge that oh, this is his name. But this name actually never appears in the original animated movie. And if you visit Snow White in the parks and you ask her about her prince, she really only refers to him as either my prince or the prince. She will not put a specific name to his face. And on that topic, if you guys would like a video where I talk about unnamed Disney characters, I would love to do that because there are so many characters that go completely nameless, but who have a lot of fan-made names that aren't recognized by the canon. 
spoiler alert, there will be another one on this list later. <laughs> but yeah, let me know down below if you want to hear more about nameless Disney characters. But as for the prince, his impact is extremely small. In terms of his park appearances, he can really only be seen at special events such as Sweetheart Night, which only takes place in Disneyland, and then in the Christmas time parade at the Magic Kingdom, where he dances with Snow White on this beautiful float, and then also nightly in Phantasmic, where he dances with Snow White on one of the barges. And fun fact about Phantasmic, just to show you how influential the princesses are over the princes, if one of the princes is ready to go backstage, but a princess for some reason is not able to get out onto the barge, barge, the barge will not go out. However, if a prince is not ready to go on the barge, but the princess is, she's given the option to go out on her own, so the Phantasmic show can still go on without a prince. Anyways, I'm rambling. We gotta get back to the prince. As for his character design, he is not really in his movie again, much like Cinderella's Prince Charming. And the reason for this was that back in the 30s, Disney had a hard time realistically animating male characters. You'll notice there aren't a lot of them in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yes, there are the Seven Dwarfs, but they are really a lot more animated. They didn't go for a realistic design with those characters. Snow White is a lot more lifelike. The Queen is a lot more lifelike. And Disney just wasn't confident enough to animate realistically male characters. But for the design that we got, I don't dislike this at all. I really love the prince's outfit. I like it more than Cinderella's prince, and I think it translates really well to his park appearances. As for the voice acting, Snow White's prince was voiced by Harry Stockwell, and it was done so beautifully. As for the song, the prince is the first prince to get his own song. Fitting, since he's the first Disney prince. At the very beginning of the movie, the prince sings the song One Song, which I absolutely love on this soundtrack. It is a very very simple love ballad, but I think it beautifully sets up the story of Snow White. And as for his goal, his goal is to find Snow White and to live happily ever after with her. And I would say he's extremely successful. He bestows true love's kiss upon Snow White and they live happily ever after, joined by a chorus of joy by the Seven Dwarves. All right, and with that, we are moving on to number eight on my list, who is Aladdin from Aladdin. Now I know there might be quite a bit of uproar, but I have to say Aladdin is not one of my favorites of the Disney princes. Now granted, he ranks higher than everybody else we've ranked so far because he is so much more of a well-rounded character. Aladdin quite literally is the titular character of his movie. He is the one we are following throughout the entire plot, and we see all of his decision-making, that is, decision-making good and bad. So while he does make decisions based off of his worldview and his upbringing, he does quite often lie to Jasmine, his significant other, when he does in fact have the chance to make the right decision. And this is really the reason why he ranks so low, is that I just think he lies a little bit too much just to save face. It's very clear that Jasmine did fall in love with poor Aladdin, Street Rat Aladdin, and I think it's just a beautiful thing to be seen as you are. And I really don't think he had to put on this huge facade in order to impress Princess Jasmine. But either way, we move on to his impact. Aladdin has an incredible impact on the Walt Disney Company. Aladdin can be seen meeting and greeting guests every single day in the Magic Kingdom over in Adventureland. He can also be seen every single night in Fantasmic, as he was the character that replaced John Smith swinging across the giant mountain. As for the character design, now I really love Aladdin's design. I think his street rat look versus his prince look is really interesting, and I like that while he was pretending to be the Prince Ali facade, at the end of the movie, he can actually live in those clothes naturally because he becomes the prince. As for the voice, Aladdin was voiced by Scott Weinger, and his singing voice was provided by Brad Kane. Now, as for his songs, Aladdin has quite a few songs, including One Jump Ahead, One Jump Ahead Reprise, and A Whole New World. And as for his goal, his goal is to end up with Princess Jasmine and to get out of his life as a poor street rat. And he is successful at both. So while I do like Aladdin as a character very much, I do think his moral compass has a little bit of tuning to do, which is why he ends up at number eight on my list. Now moving on to number seven on my list is The Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Now, once again on the topic of nameless princes, The Beast's real name is not Prince Adam. There has been so much rumor and speculation and this name just going viral to the point where Disney themselves have even made a few mistakes putting this name on merchandise and in the 
the rooms at Port Orleans. But as quickly as they came out, they tried to wipe this name clean so that we just refer to him as the Beast. Again, the name Prince Adam doesn't appear anywhere in the movie, and if you meet Belle in the park, she only does refer to him as the Beast. So, the Beast, what impact has he had on the Disney company? Quite a big one, considering he can be seen every single day in the Magic Kingdom, both leading the Festival of Fantasy Parade with Belle, and also meeting and greeting guests at the Be Our Guest restaurant. Now, in addition to these two appearances at the Magic Kingdom, he can also be seen every night in Fantasmic, where he joins Belle on the first barge of the Princess segment. As for the Beast's character design, now I love Beast in his beast form. I think we grow very attached to this character and we see his growth. And while his prince form is quite handsome, I do still feel as though there is a disconnect between the prince form and the beast form. We even see it in Belle's face right at the end when he first transforms. She's like, Ooh. But of course she does realize it's him with those beautiful blue eyes, and she knows it's the same man that she's been talking to all along. And as for the voice, the Beast was voiced by Robbie Benson. And while he doesn't have his own song in the original animated movie, he does have a few singing lines in the song Something There. And interestingly enough, small animal growls were sort of mixed in with Robbie Benson's voice for all of his speaking lines. But for his brief few singing lines in Something There, that is the only time where we clearly hear just Robbie Benson without any of that extra editing mixed in. And as for his goal, his goal is to become a human once again and free all of the castle staff of the curse placed on them by the Enchantress. And he is successfully able to fall in love with Belle, let her fall in love with him, and free the castle of the curse. Ah, such a beautiful story. So heartwarming. I love the Beast. And with that, we move on to number six on my list, who is Prince Philip from Sleeping Beauty. Now, I love Prince Philip as a prince. He is the third prince to ever be created by the Walt Disney Company, and he's also the first one to have a really stable personality in his movie. Now, this prince also has quite a big impact on the Walt Disney Company. He can be seen every single day in the Festival of Fantasy Parade battling against the giant Maleficent float. Oh, it is such a sight to see. And while he's not normally a walk around meet and greet character, he can be seen in the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party and also at Sweetheart Nights. Now, as for the character design, I really like Prince Philip's character design. I think he gives me the most classic prince outfit out of any of the other princes. He just very much looks like the quintessential fairy tale prince. I like his outfit in the woods and also at the end when he's dancing with Aurora. As for the voice acting, Prince Philip was voiced by actor Bill Shirley, and he sings the song Once Upon a Dream with Princess Aurora. Another thing that was kind of fun was that Mary Costa often told in interviews that she had a little bit of a crush on Bill Shirley, so it sort of came across when they were recording the song together, and it just creates this wonderfully magnetic energy between Philip and Aurora. And as for Prince Philip's goal, his goal is to marry the girl he loves, who of course he's referring to as Princess Aurora as he meets her in the forest, although he doesn't know who she is. And as if fate would have it, Princess Aurora ends up being the one he was betrothed to since he was very young. And he successfully wins her heart by battling Maleficent and freeing King Stefan's castle of the curse. For only being the third Disney prince, Prince Philip is pretty awesome. Moving on to number five on my list is Li Shang from Mulan. Now, I love Li Shang. He is such an awesome guy. He is a warrior, a fierce friend, a wonderful partner for Mulan, and I think he just has a really, really awesome and strong presence in his movie. As for his impact on the Walt Disney Company, he really doesn't have a large impact, and he can really only be seen in the new segment of Fantasmic where he fights with Mulan. Although, I'll be completely honest, the costuming doesn't necessarily give off Li Shang vibes, in my opinion. I very much would have liked to see the armor that he's in in his movie. But regardless, at least he's there. I'm very happy about that. Li Shang is voiced by B.D. Wong, and his singing voice is provided by Donny Osmond. And interestingly enough, in the Cantonese and the Mandarin dubs of the movie, his singing voice is actually done by Jackie Chan. So if you've never listened to the Cantonese or Mandarin dubs of the song, I would definitely give them a listen because they're actually really good. And how can we forget Li Shang's iconic song, I'll Make a Man Out of You? This one is such a bang it is sure to reach the top 10 list of many Disney fans. And as for his goal, his goal is to lead his army to victory and to save China from the Huns. And he is of course able to do this fighting alongside Mulan. I also have to say I really like this prince because in watching this movie I totally get the vibes that he was into Mulan even before he found out she was a girl. That might have just been me, but I think that's true love. 
<laughs> Overall, I love Lee Shang, and I wish we saw more of him in the parks. And with that, we move on to number four on my list, who is Kristoff from Frozen and Frozen 2. Now, Kristoff lands this spot on the list because he is just such a sweet guy. He is always attentive to Anna's needs. He is always there to help her whenever she needs him. He is very loving and sweet to his trusty sidekick, Sven, and he just has such a wonderful energy around him. You can't help but love Kristoff. Now, as for his impact, Kristoff has quite a big impact considering how big of a franchise Frozen is. While he can't be seen in the Festival of Fantasy Parade as that is only reserved for Anna and Elsa, he can be seen over in Disney's Hollywood Studios at the first time in forever Frozen sing-along show. That's overall just such a fun show. If you get the chance when you head to Disney, make sure to check it out. As for his character design, it's not overly complicated, but I think it's just perfect to fit him in with the people of Arendelle. He very much seems like he fits in with the rest of the town. And it's actually really funny to see him in formal attire because it looks so unnatural for him. You really just want to see him in his casual everyday clothes. And as for the voice, Kristoff was voice acted by Jonathan Groff. And his song from Frozen 1, although very short, is Reindeers Are Better Than People, which is very cute. Although in Frozen 2, he does get his own full-fledged song. Lost in the Woods is a full-on, like, boy band fantasy. It is so fun and campy, and it just adds a ton of humor to his character. And as for his goal, really his only goal is to make sure Anna has everything she needs in life, and I think that's really special and sweet. And in terms of his success, I think he's really successful, considering how happy Anna is at the end of Frozen 2. And I cannot wait to see more of Kristoff in the upcoming Frozen 3 and Frozen 4. And with that, we move on to number 3 on my list. I'm gonna break some hearts with this one. At number 3 is Flynn Rider from Tangled. Now, Flynn Rider is a fan favorite to so many. He was famously conceived in what was known as the Hot Man Meeting, where a lot of the female staff of Disney Animation came together and discussed how to create the most attractive male character. And they were pretty successful. Flynn Rider is a charmer, but he is also a good human, which is brought out by Rapunzel's wide-eyed enthusiasm. Oh, they're just such a cute couple. I love the two of them together. They really give bad cop, good cop energy too. As for his impact, Flynn has had quite a big impact on the Disney company, as he can be seen swinging around every single day in the Festival of Fantasy Parade at Magic Kingdom. He also shows up quite a bit for Sweetheart Night, and also on the Prince and Princess float in Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. As for his character design, for his outfits, I really do like the Wanted Thief look, but he also has a really great princely look in the short that is all about him and Rapunzel's wedding. Kind of fun to see him in more princely attire, although I will say the normal scoundrel look fits him a lot more. <laughs> Flynn Rider was voiced by Zachary Levi, and while the character literally says, no, no, I don't sing, he actually sings in two songs. He of course has a small little snippet in I've Got a Dream, and how can we forget the sweeping ballad I See the Light that he shares with Rapunzel. So incredibly beautiful. Now as for his goal, his goal actually switches in the movie. He first wants to steal the tiara that comes from the kingdom, but upon meeting Rapunzel, his new dream becomes to end up with her, and of course with that one, he is very successful. Very cute, a very sweet guy, and it is very safe to say that he has charmed his way all the way to number three on this list. <laughs> We are getting to the final contestants. Can you guess who is number one and number two on my list? Leave me a comment down below before I tell you. All right, moving on to number two is Prince Naveen from The Princess and the Frog. Now, I love this character. There is something about his sass, but also the way he balances out with Tiana that is just absolutely spellbinding. He is funny and sarcastic and he has so many laugh lines. He's clumsy when he's falling in love with Tiana and he strives to help her get her dream. And what's fun is that Tiana and Naveen aren't necessarily interested in each other at the beginning of the movie. They both have very, very different goals, but through spending time with each other and building a connection off of one another, they become one of my favorite Disney couples. Now, as for his impact, Prince Naveen has had quite a big impact on the Walt Disney Company. He can be seen every single day in the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade alongside Princess Tiana. He can also be seen in the finale of Fantasmic alongside Tiana. And I'm not quite sure if he's still there, but there was a small meet and greet happening outside of Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios across from the Muppets, where we walked by one day and we saw Tiana and Naveen there. So I don't know if he's still there, but he has been there. <laughs> For his character design, I love 
his princely costume at the very end. The green suit, oh, this suit looks so good on him. And it translates just as well into the parks. For his other costumes, he has just on a normal streetwear, which of course suits him very well as well. But my really biggest complaint is, much like Princess Tiana, he spends a lot of the time in his movie as a frog. But something tells me we're going to be seeing a lot more of Prince Naveen in the parks with the opening of Tiana's Bayou Adventure this summer. I am so unbelievably excited to get a lot more Princess and the Frog in the Walt Disney World Resort. Prince Devine is brilliantly voice acted by Bruno Campos, who has such a fun energy about him, and a spectacular singing voice as well. And as for his song, we don't get a ton of singing from Prince Naveen, however, he does have quite a bit to say in When We're Human. And finally, for his goal, his goal, much like Flynn Rider, changes throughout his movie. At the beginning, his goal is to marry Charlotte LaBeouf in order to marry into wealth. However, upon meeting and spending time with Princess Tiana, his goal changes to end up with her her, and to also see that her dream comes true. And with both of those, he is extremely successful. I love Prince Naveen. I think he has such a wonderful energy about him, and I can't wait to see even more of him in Walt Disney World come this summer. And with that, we have reached number one, my favorite Disney prince. Have you guessed? Have you guessed? You probably could guess by now. Yes, at number one on my list, to probably nobody's surprise, is Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid. Now, I love Prince Eric. While at first glance he seems to be a very simple prince, there are so many little things that we see out of him and his personality that make him such a well-rounded and complex character. He plays the flute, so he is very musically inclined. He has a pet dog, Max, so he's very good with animals. He has great banter with his servant, Grimsby. Of course, that brings out such a sarcastic and fun natured personality. And it's also really special to see the amount of time, effort, and energy he puts into his relationship with Ariel even before she speaks a single word to him. I mean, realistically, they spend an entire day together touring the kingdom and going out on a boat ride, and he's able to uphold the conversation on his own and give her a really fun and wonderful experience of the human world. It's so special just to see how enamored he is with Ariel to the point where he just puts 100% effort into her without even thinking that she's the girl who rescued him. Oh, he's just such a wonderful prince and deserves more credit. Moving on to his impact, Prince Eric has had quite a big impact on the Walt Disney Company, as he can be seen every single night in Fantasmic alongside Ariel in the second barge of the princess segment. He was also previously seen in the stage show Voyage of the Little Mermaid at Disney's Hollywood Studios, which did close because of COVID. However, Later this year, we are going to be getting a brand new Little Mermaid show over in that same area, and concept art of this show has showed us the kiss the girl scene with silhouettes of both Ariel and Eric. So much like our friend Prince Naveen, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of Prince Eric in the parks come later this year. And Prince Eric is also able to be seen as an animatronic on Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid ride over in Magic Kingdom. As for the character design, Prince Eric's character design is very, very simple, but I kind of like that because again, it directs the attention towards Ariel. He has a basic sailor outfit and also the wedding attire at the end in order to, to give him two separate looks. And as for his voice, Prince Eric is voice acted by Christopher Barnes. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Prince Eric is the only prince to not sing in his original animated movie, which seems very strange, but it's true, he doesn't sing in his movie. Now granted, of course, he does get a song in the live action, which is oh, fantastic. And he also gets one on Broadway, but those don't really count. So for this list, he is songless, yet he's still at number one for me. <laughs> Call me biased if you will, that's totally fine. But as for his goal, in the movie, his goal is outlined for him by Grimsby, which is to settle down with the right girl in order to marry her, in order to one day take up the throne of his kingdom. And while Prince Eric seems resistant to this, it is Ariel, of course, that makes him want to change his mind and actively pursue achieving this goal, which he is able to do at the end when he marries Ariel. I absolutely love Prince Eric and I cannot wait to see more of him later this year. And with that, we have reached the end of my Disney Prince ranking. Thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun talking about all of these incredible princes today. If you enjoyed this list and want to see more Disney rankings from me, I'm going to link up top a Disney ranking playlist, which includes every Disney ranking that I've done so far. If you like this ranking, make sure to like down below and subscribe so that way you never miss magic from me. Because at this point, I'm releasing new videos every single Friday at 5 p.m. And you're definitely not going to want to miss the one I have in store for next week. You can also find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And until next time, have a magical rest of your day and see you real soon.